I am Keena Nisley, and this is The Life of the Land is in Its Real Estate. Uh, happy Veterans Day, and to celebrate Veterans Day, I have David, military to millionaire, with us today to share with us about how do you, how do you do military, can you do military to millionaire? So David, can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I really appreciate you having me on the show, Kina. And uh, well, I got started in real estate in 2015, right? So I'm a, I'm a Marine, I'm still active duty uh, for a little bit longer. And I've been in the military now for like 12 years. And in 2015, someone introduced me to the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, and it kind of opened my, opened my eyes to how I was wasting money on rent. And so I bought a duplex, and I lived in one side, and I rented the other side. And so I went from, effectively went from paying like five fifty a month to live in an apartment. This is in Missouri, and uh, pay like five fifty a month to live in an apartment. And then I dropped to I was only paying a hundred bucks because my tenants were covering all the rest to own the duplex, and it just opened my eyes, and I kind of went from there. So at this point, I'm a a partner on 146 unit syndication. I have 15 units myself with five that we should close next week. And then, so that'll bring me up to 20 and I've bought and sold a bunch of other stuff here and there, uh, including some stuff I partnered with on a flip in Hawaii. I've got a flip in Missouri. Uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. And then at this point, I'm, I'm building a community to help service members and vets learn how to use their, their VA loan and uh, build wealth while in the military. So yes, and it is quite a community. So um, you're you're reaching, you know, twenty thousand followers on Instagram. So there is, and and I like I told you before, um, you're quite the celebrity. So we we met why David was in Hawaii, <laughs> and um, so yes, it's it, it, you're famous. So and and why you should be, um, which is awesome. So what me motivated you to start Military to Millionaire? honestly, it wasn't really like a thought process. It wasn't. So, so I was just trying to learn how to get better at writing. And so I was trying to think of an idea for a blog. And a friend of mine was like, why don't you just document what you're doing in real estate? Like you're doing it anyway. If you just wrote about what you're learning, maybe someone else would benefit from it. Um, so I can't even take credit for the idea. And I started writing about it. Um, in fact, I didn't even come up with the name for the website. Another friend of mine came up with that because all my ideas were terrible. And uh yeah, so it just kind of started as me just talking about what I was doing. And at first, like all things that take time, you know, it was just me talking to myself to the internet. And then it slowly started to pick up. And then people said, you should start a podcast. And then it just kind of has exploded over the last, uh, really probably over the last year. Uh, we've gone, I don't want to say exponential, but um, we're, we're, I think we're at that bell curve. Things are, things are really picking up and the community is growing. Um, probably got 40, 50,000 followers across all platforms now. And uh, yeah, it's been incredible to see. And, and more importantly, the amount of people we've been able to help with learning about VA loans or, or building, I mean, you know, there's been several, several people that we've helped buy houses or, or just get out of situations they shouldn't have been in um, and really just help people avoid all the financial mistakes I made when I was young in the service. So it's been cool. Uh -oh. Yes, yes. So, and, and I have been lucky enough to be on the side of helping your clients to, to yeah. you know, grow their wealth. And I appreciate that. And I love the kids that you send me um, and, and the mindset that you give them that starting at 26 and starting their investment journey. I wish we had started at 26. Yeah, did. <laughs> so, so who, who's your audience that you're mostly servicing um, across, across these platforms? I try to target 18 to 40 year old, uh, but my my demographic that I reach currently is 25 to 35, and it's it's 75, 80 percent male. So your typical, you know, beat chest marine or or soldier or whatever, uh, it, kind of what you would expect from a military demographic, right? There are spouses, but the vast majority of people who are in the community are are, are males because it's a primarily male dominated. Uh, employment, um, and because I just am not feminine enough, apparently, to relate to the <laughs> other side. Because no matter how much I try, that that number does not change. So, um, but yes, yeah. So generally, uh, yeah, you know, military age men and some women. So, what parts of the world are you reaching? Are you strictly, um, you know, United States? You know, when you were in Hawaii, were you only touching Hawaii? Um, 
what what part of the world are are you touching? All of it. Um, yeah, I've got I've got people. So I mean, primarily uh, the U.S., um, California, pretty good following. Pretty good following in Hawaii. I think a part of that is just because I was there when I started everything, and I hosted a meetup. So there's like I have a personal network there. Uh, and then a big big network in California, and all the typical. You can kind of see where the military hubs are. But definitely have, I mean, if I was like, you look at my podcast demographics and I have listeners in Japan where there's a base, in Italy where there's a base, in Germany where there's a base, in England. Um, and we actually have a, a mastermind group that we help service members and vets. And uh, it's interesting because we had a call on Saturday and the guy who was on the call was everyone who asked a question. He's like, oh, where are you from? And we had like one from England on the call, one from Germany, one in Hawaii. Yeah. So definitely all across the world. And uh, people are investing locally. People are investing long distance. I mean, there's some pretty cool stuff going on in the military real estate community. So, yeah. So that does, that leads into, you know, can people invest internationally? Is that possible? So yes and yes, depending on how you mean the question. So I have, there's a girl named Morgan in the group and she is currently in Germany and she owns real estate in Germany. Um, so, so it is definitely possible to invest internationally in that sense, but uh, there's also a lot of people in the group or, or just in the community in general who are buying real estate in the U S while not in the U S, um, which is really no different than, you know, I was buying real estate in Missouri from Hawaii. It's basically the same concept. It's, the only difference is how long it takes to get the mail, you know, the notary documents sent to you. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got a buddy in, uh, England, who's bought several properties in Kansas. I've got a buddy in Japan who's under contract on some stuff in Huntsville, Alabama right now. Um, just interviewed a guy on my podcast a little bit ago. He's in Germany and he's bought like 10 or 11 units in Texas. So yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely possible on, on both fronts. Uh, you just got to understand that you either need to have a really good team or you're going to have to go and either either partner with somebody or look into like turnkey or syndication because if you don't have a good team in that area or you're not intimately familiar with that market, it's going to be really rough to try to uh, try to force that. So you talk about team um, for our, for our viewers, what kind of team are you looking for? Well, for me personally, uh, property manager, because I just do not have the personality to deal with that at all. Um, but I would recommend that for anyone who's overseas or long distance, for sure. I have a couple friends who manage all their own properties long distance and good on them. I don't recommend that for anybody. It takes a special person. Um, so property manager, real estate agent who, who knows what they're doing. Um, and I can tell you that real estate agents are not created equal. Um, I was going to say this actually before we got on the call, but I, I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to record. So part of the community is I, I help connect people with service or with agents all across the country, right? And up until this month, there were only, and I've sent, I've probably introduced 80 to 100 people this year. Um, there were only three agents prior to this month who had closed a property, right? And it, three, three, two or three are you, five are another buddy of mine, and then the other person I want. So it's like, you can introduce a million people to a million people, but if it's not a good real estate agent, it's just, you're going to, you're going to, you're fighting an uphill battle. So a good real estate agent, a good property manager, are the two biggest ones. And then you want a lender, um, especially if you're using the VA loan, you need a lender who knows what they're doing because <laughs> not all lenders are created equal. And that's what that gives <laughs> VA loans a bad rap. And then those are the biggest ones. Contractors, the next piece to that puzzle. But uh, if you have a good property manager, they should be able to handle a lot of the maintenance in-house. Okay, so what what are the advantages of being a a, a VA investor? What, well, what advantages one, there? So, so the, I mean, the biggest one is if you pull any audience of beginners in the real estate world and say, "What's the thing holding you back?" Money is the number one answer, always. And people say, "Oh, service members don't make that much money." Well. <laughs> I disagree. We actually get paid fairly well. But if you don't have money saved, especially somewhere like Hawaii, right? Like let's talk, let's talk million dollar home. You know how long it takes somebody who makes $70,000 a year to save 200 grand for a down payment, right? So uh, even if they only pay 
the F, they do an FHA where they only pay three and a half percent down. That's still thirty five thousand dollars. That's not easy to come up with. Um, most there's a lot of people who will never see that amount of money saved if they're not good with their money. So the VA loan allows you to get into a property with nothing out of pocket. You can even walk away with cash in your pocket. I see. I've seen. Uh, I think the. I'm trying to think. I want to say one of my buddies. I think you can pull up to four percent as at closing costs. So like theoretically you could get paid 40 grand at closing on a million dollar purchase. But I've seen someone walk away from closing with $12,000 after purchasing a million dollar property. Um, that's pretty cool, right? So the VA loan has all sorts of cool opportunities like that. But I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to it. Uh, no, no private mortgage insurance, no, um, you get pretty good rates. It's very solid. It's reliable. They even have some programs to, if you get into trouble, they have some ways to help you through that. So you may not get foreclosed on and like the downside is mitigated. Um, but the fact that you can get in with nothing out of pocket, that's huge. And I love helping VA buyers and you're right. It does take a special lender and a special agent that kind of understands those ins and outs. And it takes an agent on, on the other side understanding a VA loan. Yeah. Um, we're pretty fortunate here in Hawaii because we see a lot of them. But I know mainland, they don't see quite as many VA loans. And so I see a lot of questions on Facebook about what do I do with this? So you do want right. agents that understand the ins and outs of those or can at least teach another agent how, how those a work. A lot so. of misinformation. And yeah, yeah, a good agent will be able to talk the sellers, the listing agent into accepting a VA loan offer because there's definitely some people who have a bad taste in their mouth who, who think that the VA loan, the, the rumor is that the VA loan is this like impossible thing to close unless it's a brand new bill. Um, they say, oh, if the paint's chipped, you can't. Okay. It does have some stringent inspection requirements, but they're very easy things to fix and get around. And it's really not that. So it just takes an agent or a lender who can communicate, look, we are going to close this loan. This is, there's nothing wrong. This will be fine. Um, which is exactly why we try to connect people with those because there are agents out there. We talked about this before the recording. I didn't use the VA loan on my first purchase because the lender told me that I should, I only got to use it once, which is wrong. And so <laughs> I didn't use it. And it's cost me like 12 or $13,000 over the last few years in PMI alone. So yes. it's stupid. Yes, you can use it multiple times. So yeah. Um, so I, I did peruse your, your Instagram and, and your Facebook. And one thing caught my eye is that a VA buyer can live rent free. They can live payment free. How, how, how is that? House hacking, which is the greatest strategy, I think, for anybody getting started in real estate. It's such a powerful. So that's what I did when I started. And I'm now doing it again, although I, I didn't actually buy this house. I'm renting it. My landlord lets me not this house, this is a cabin up in the mountains that I'm staying in. <laughs> um, but, but the house that I'm staying in right now is a brand new build in a brand new neighborhood, but my landlord lets me Airbnb bedrooms. And so I'm, I'm paying $3,000 a month and pulling in $2,400 a month through Airbnb. Um, but what you can do with the house hack, let's say I'll use my buddy, Brian, as an example. He bought a fourplex in San Diego for 1.23 uh, million. And he, I think he walked away with like, 800 bucks at closing. So he didn't, you know, he didn't pay anything down. He got a little bit back, nothing crazy. Um, but the it's, I think it's two, three bed, two bath and two, three bed, one bath units. And he lives in one of the units. He rents out the other three units. And then he also rents out two of the bedrooms in his three, because he, he's a single guy. So he rents out all three units. He rents out two of the bedrooms in his unit. And he's making, I want to say it's $900 a month right now on top of his mortgage payment and all of his expenses to live in this $1.2 million home. And that's, so he's getting to save his entire housing allowance, which is like $2,600 tax free. He's getting paid like eight or 900 bucks. I can't remember, he got an extra roommate. So I don't remember what the math changed to, but like eight or 900 bucks on top of his mortgage and expenses. And then every month on a loan that size, he's paying down two or $3,000 in principal. So his net worth, will go up $60,000 every year that he owns that house. Even if, I mean, even, even if the market took a nosedive, if he holds that home for 20 years, you know, all he has to do is not sell it. 
if he just doesn't sell it, even if it never goes up in value, he's a millionaire when he's when he turns in, in 30 years. So when he turns 50, he'll be a millionaire if he does nothing else ever. But yeah, he lives in this property for free and he pays down his mortgage and he keeps his housing allowance. So he's saving an extra, you know, $2,600 a month with his housing allowance, which he is reinvesting. Um, and I use that example because it's a big, expensive, scary property, but it absolutely works on a $100,000 property or $200,000 property. So what it does is it lets you learn how to be a landlord. It gets you past the fear of buying an investment property because you're just buying a house, which is not as scary. Um, and it lets you save more money so you can invest it elsewhere. I love the house hack. I think that's the greatest thing anybody could do getting started in real estate. So, yes, and lenders now are requiring um, to give you a loan for an investment property, um, requiring you to have landlord experience. So he's getting his landlord experience. So then later on, he, he can obtain a loan on, you know, mm -hmm. a, a standalone investment property. So that that is awesome. And so, you, know what, you know what else is really cool about that? What? <laughs> so he hired a property manager. So because he hired a property manager, the their landlord experience counts towards the lender. So he was able to use the income from the asset, 75% of the gross rent to qualify for the mortgage. So he realistically could have bought like a $1.8 million house on a less than $100,000 a year salary. So yeah, pretty yeah. crazy. That is awesome. So why do you recommend investing in real estate versus other investments like stocks, gold, silver, all, all these other things we hear? Why would you recommend real estate over those investments? I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily say there's anything wrong with those, right? Like I, I have a 401k, I invest in my thrift savings plan, I'm going to max it out this year. Um, and, and I've done that for a long time. I like real estate for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, if Elon Musk smokes a blunt on a podcast, my house value doesn't drop 9% the next day, but <laughs> Tesla stock did. Um, so outside factors can control real estate, but most of the time you are in control. You can decide to raise the rent, lower the rent, how you handle a situation. You're in the driver's seat. You control that asset. Well, with stocks or, or gold or you know any of these other market things, um, you just might not be right. And, th and there's also like, there's different exit strategies. You can be much more strategic with real estate than you can with any of those other investments. So I like all of that. There's also the tax advantages, right? If you, if you make a hundred thousand dollars this year selling stocks, that's great, but you're going to pay short term cap, short term capital gains tax on all of it. So you really didn't make a hundred thousand dollars. Whereas with real estate, there's still capital gains tax. There's still taxes here and there, but you get a bunch of tax advantages while you own the property and, and the other thing is you can leverage other people's money. So no bank is going to give you $80,000 to go buy stock, but they'll give you $80,000 to buy a house all day if you put 20 down. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there's just a lot of really cool benefits. Um, and real estate's just, I mean, everything's cyclical. Everything has its booms and busts and its cycles and everything. But for me, real estate is more stable, more controllable, and more dependent or dependable um, than a lot of the other stuff, right? I mean, we saw the what's happened to the Tesla price of stock over the last year, and it's been great, but like their price to earnings ratio doesn't even remotely allow that kind of value. So it's it's only a matter of time before I think that comes, maybe it comes back down, maybe it doesn't, but like with a house, you know, hey, this is what it's worth. This is what it rents for. With stocks, there's like, if people think it's worth, the money, even if it's nothing shows that it is, it'll go up and it's, it's just, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you can be on the rant, but it's logic, <laughs> much more logical than it is emotional. And I like that. So, yeah. Okay. So what advice would you give a military person who wants to start investing? Uh, the first thing I would say is just make sure your personal finances are in check, right? Save money, get rid of your crazy expenses. Don't buy a brand new car. <laughs> be smart with your money, right? Like the guy who bought that $1.2 million fourplex, he saved 50 grand in his first enlistment. So he was set. So if something comes up, he's got $50,000 that he can turn around and, you know, utilize to help get that property along. Um, so be savvy with your personal finances, get them in order, be smart with them. Um, the next thing I would say is read some books. There's some great books online about real estate. I mean, Bigger Pockets has some, um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad will kind of get you in the right mentality. 
and then just get around people who are doing the same thing or want to do the same thing. So if you're in Hawaii, there's a couple good meetups that you could attend. If you're anywhere else, they have good meetups you could attend. Um, if you're in the military, you should jump at our Facebook group. Um, and or even if you're not in the military, you should jump at our Facebook group. But uh, then just then you if you get around people who are doing it, then a you'll see it's not as scary because other people are doing it. But b you'll be able to ask those questions. So when you get hung up on something, you can say, Hey, Dave, um, what do I do about this? Oh. I've got the answer or I don't have the answer, but this guy does. Um, and I think that's huge. Just being around a group of people who has similar goals. So yeah, the like-minded people definitely help. And I mean, I enjoy your page. I like looking at the questions and going, oh, you know, and, and learning the answer if I don't know it. So I, I highly recommend your page too. So what are, cause it's not all, roses and cotton candy when you're investing, as we all know. Um, what mistakes have you seen people make? What are the common mistakes? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> It'd be a whole show. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the one that I've made rather than seeing people. Um, I trust people too much that I don't, and I hate using this phrase, military says it all the time, trust but verify. Um, I, I give people too long of a leash. So like if, it, it, so for example, I lost $30,000 on a house flip because I was trusting the contractor when I was making the payouts instead of sending my property manager over there to actually walk the property every time I sent the next check. Um, he was sending me some pictures, you know, there was no reason to distrust him, but I had to get over the fact that anybody who's professional in, or in a profession will understand checks and balances. They're not going to be offended by you having someone double check their work. Um, and so my biggest mistake was just being a little too trusting with people, um, which is not, a, that's a good problem to have. I think trusting people, but just having those checks and balance in, in place. Um, the other thing I think that a lot of people do is that they either, they don't have their finances in check, um, where they talk, they psych themselves out. So they get, you know, what if this, what if that, and they try to time the market or they try to time that, like, if you buy a decent property, just hold it forever. Like you're going to be fine. You know, if you don't sell the property, it doesn't matter if it goes down in value at some point, right? Just make sure you can make the payments. Um, especially if you're doing a house hack where you're not paying to live there. Um, yeah. I don't know. Oh, okay. So you've talked about the VA loan. A lot of them, um, they're using the house hack. They have to live in the house um, to use the VA loan. They have to remain in the house. Um, at least up to a year, and then they can they can yeah. refi it. The to occupy, yes. Yes, yes. I have to say that, uh, <laughs> but they can refinance it and and get their certificate of eligibility back again to buy their next one. Um, but what other ways are you seeing VA, uh, you know, investors get funding? What what's another other ways you've seen them fund their? Well, there's other ways to, to use the VA loan again, right? Like if you get moved from one location to another, you can use the VA loan again. Although there is a cap the second time you use it. You can also, uh, if you move more than 50 miles away or if you need to up, upgrade your, your house, like if your family's growing, there's some, some gray area there, some loopholes on the VA loan. But um, I mean, other ways, it really kind of just depends on what they're buying, right? I've seen, I've seen them use the FHA loan. Um, but I, I also see creative financing. I like, I like to see... Uh, like seller financing, I think that's huge. If you're in a market and you can talk to sellers directly and then you know you can work out a deal where you're paying them uh, for the property. Um, that's not super common, but it's really cool. Uh, and then the cool thing though is like if you do a house hack and you save all that money, then you can turn around and put 20% down on a house because you'll be able to save the money while you're doing it, while you're learning about real estate investing. So um, I would never have been able to put, a, put $20 down on a house when I first started, but I did it few months ago and I'm doing it again in a couple days it's as you as you get better at this and your finances improve you'll you'll have more money coming in it's like a snowball so you know you buy that next house you have five hundred dollars a month that you can add to your savings then you buy another house now you have a thousand dollars a month that you can add to your savings so yeah all right so what what advice would you give somebody if, if somebody walked up to you today and said hey I want to do this what what's the one thing you would let them you know what do you want to tell them do it. Um, I would just say, make sure that the agent and lender you're connected with understand the VA loan and the ins and outs of how to use it. Don't, don't go with the friend family. Don't do that to yourself. The, I, ugh, I can't, 
can't stand the like, oh yeah, my friend's a real estate agent, so I'm going to use them. How many houses has your friend sold? None? Okay, so your friend doesn't know how to negotiate, and they don't actually use their license at all, and you're going to go with them because they're a friend over the person who, like you, has sold 50 homes this year and actually knows how to, how to negotiate or how the market works. Um, so don't go with a friend and family unless your friend and family is a solid real estate agent. Um, get your finances in order. Get around people who are doing what you want to do. And, and, and this is huge. Don't take advice from people who haven't been where you want to go, right? Like people who don't own a house will tell you buying a house is a bad idea. People who aren't married will tell you getting married is a bad idea. People who, you know, they're not it. Don't listen to them. Just, just in one ear, out the other ear. You know what you want to do. Spend time reading about what you want to do, listening to podcasts, getting around other people, and then don't take advice from people who haven't done what you want to do or aren't actively doing it. Um, I think that's huge. If you can just avoid that pitfall, I think you'll be very, very well off in life. So, yeah, just just surround yourself with those people. And there are opportunities. I know here um, on Oahu, there's a lot of opportunities to, to get with investors. And I know you create opportunities um, for people where you are. So with that, how would they get a hold of you? How do you want people, if they, if they have questions, how, where, where all can they find you? You're everywhere, but where all can they find you? Yeah, at this point, if you go to Google and type in Military Millionaire, I'll pop right up. Um, but from military to millionaire.com or Instagram from military to millionaire, probably the two best spots. I will always respond to messages on Instagram uh, within 24 hours. I, I, that, if I get too much bigger, I may not be able to do that all the time. But for now, I'll always respond to everything on Instagram. So at from military to millionaire um, or really, yeah, YouTube, podcasts. Uh, Facebook, it's all the same. Military millionaire from military to millionaire. All Dave, right. Look for the mustache. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for spending part of, of, of your Veterans Day with us. I know you are in the mountains at a cabin on vacation, but you did take the time out to meet with us. And I really appreciate that. <gasps> oh, is that snow? <laughs> I did <laughs> So, all right. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining us on the life of the land and its real estate. I will see you all in two weeks and we will have a CPA to come talk to us about the tax advantages of owning a home. And yes, he will answer that question. Can I write off space in my home since we're all working from home now? Um, Cause that is a huge question right now. So thank you to Think Tech Hawaii. And again, this is the life of the land is in its real estate and I'm Keena Nisley and I will see you all in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much. <laughs>